Honourable Leanne Dalseal. Mr Speaker, good television needs faith from everyone. The beginning is the most difficult part, finding the faith to have an idea, to stick with it, to believe in it, and believe that it will improve and endure. Then producers have to keep that faith, not let it be diluted by doubters and sceptics, nurture it, give time and respect, lead the crusade from the front. Once the idea is whole, the commissioners and programmers need the faith to look outside the dogma that surrounds them and see the worth in the idea, see a place for it, and believe other people will see that worth too. Then, even when it finally gets on screen, the spectators need more than a little faith to give it a first and maybe a second and a third chance before it can repay their trust by becoming something they value and love. And that's the problem with the move to fully commercialise, then surely privatise Television New Zealand. It shows that the government has no faith in local broadcasting, no belief beyond that of its ability to make a profit. And without that faith, everything else in the process becomes more difficult easier to avoid or refuse until eventually the faith is lost altogether. That is why the concept of the state broadcaster is still important in these fractured media days. It is a symbol of the collective belief that local tele television is more than money-making space filler. It's a statement that the worth of New Zealand-made programmes is greater than the sum of the money that's spent on them. It's a belief that they are important to us, belong to us. It shows faith in ourselves, our presence and our memories. Mr Speaker, I wish that I had said that. That was a submission from the uh, director and editor mem member, Jonathan Bruff, of the Screen Directors Guild of New Zealand. Uh, he made that submission to us. Uh, when we heard only 15 submissions on this bill, which I think is a shame that we heard so few submissions, only 55 submissions having been uh, received. And I think the reason that the number of submissions was so low and yet the quality of those received was so high was because of the Minister's position that he put at the outset of his comments on the second reading of this bill. Essentially, the national government have told the people of New Zealand that it is irrelevant, that their views and input into the development of the charter that we had in place is irrelevant. They, in fact, were progressing this piece of legislation as the charter itself was being renegotiated with the people of New Zealand. It is an absolute affront to democracy, this piece of legislation, and I'm proud of the fact that our party has taken a principled stance to oppose it and oppose it we will. Mr Speaker, the reason that we um, oppose the legislation um, is actually also summed up in the uh, reality of the uh, functions of Television New Zealand taking over from the Charter. And we've heard various um, speakers already, or two speakers from the government side, actually saying that it doesn't matter, that we're shifting to the functions of Television New Zealand are to be a successful national television and digital media company providing a range of content and services on a choice of delivery platforms and, and maintaining its commercial performance, and then in carrying out its functions, Television New Zealand must provide high quality content that is relevant to and enjoyed and valued by New Zealand audiences, and B, and this is what replaces the Charter, encompasses both New Zealand and international content and reflects Māori perspective. Well, I'm sorry. That doesn't replace the Charter, which invites Television New Zealand, or in fact requires Television New Zealand, to feature programming across all genres that informs, entertains and educates New Zealand audiences. It requires Television New Zealand to strive always to set and maintain the highest standards of programme quality and editorial integrity. It requires Television um, New Zealand to provide shared experiences that contribute to a sense of citizenship and national identity. And that is somehow dealt with in encompassing both New Zealand and international content and reflects Māori perspectives. And then 
And this is the replacement for Reflex Māori Perspectives. This is what it's replacing. Ensure in its programmes and programme planning the participation of Māori and the presence of a significant Māori voice. That's what Television New Zealand has to do under the Charter, and now they simply have to reflect Māori perspectives. Mr Speaker, that is an embarrassment in this day and age, especially with all of the debates that we've had in this par Parliament around issues relating to um, Māori, and I suspect that the Māori Party will be condemning this bill when they make uh, their contribution to this debate. Uh, then the Television New Zealand Charter goes on to require that Television New Zealand feature programming that serves the varied interests and informational needs in age groups within New Zealand society, including tastes and interests not generally catered for by other national television broadcasters. Well, I don't see that at all uh, in this particular um, set of functions or its reference to its functions under the bill in front of us. And in fact, I just find it rather um, interesting because the um, SPARA made a very interesting comment in their submission, which is uh, the current proposed wording of the bill means that there is neither obligation nor commitment to the commissioning and screening of New Zealand local content. Encompass, encompasses both New Zealand and international content, does not mandate any actual commitment to significant local content. Given that international content is cheaper to purchase and those relationships with providers of offshore programming are contractually ongoing, there is little or no need to legislate for the purchase of international products. And that's a very good point. It's not as though... If that was not written in that legislation, do you think that Television New Zealand would stop buying international content? Of course they wouldn't. It's local content that this legislation should be protecting because it doesn't happen just as a matter of course. It happens because there is a commitment to it. And a number of countries, of course, have quotas uh, where, in fact, those um, concerns are able to be addressed. Then it carries on to say that there has to be a maintenance of a balance between programmes of general appeal and programmes of interest to smaller audiences. Seeking to extend the range of ideas and experiences available to New Zealanders, Television New Zealand has to play a leading role in New Zealand television by setting standards of programme quality and encouraging creative risk-taking and experiment. It has to play a leading role in New Zealand television by complying with free-to-air codes of broadcasting practice, in particular any code with provisions on violence, and it has to support and promote the talents and creative resources of New Zealanders and of the independent New Zealand film and television industry. And that, Mr Speaker, is another point that was made very strongly in the SPARTA um, submission. Basically, it says that a clear commitment to commissioning and screening of local content is imperative to the stability of the independent screen production sector. And I don't think that anyone could actually put that better. I think that is absolutely the problem in a nutshell. And in fact, they go on to say that it was ironic that at a time when the importance of the film industry is being recognised and supported in New Zealand, well, I mean, I saw the National Party bend over backwards to change the law of this country in order to support the film industry, or that was the uh, pretense that they used on that particular basis. But here we are, exactly, we've got, the, we've got large budget grants available for our film industry, and, and yet the bill that we have in front of us can effectively undermine and remove support for the backbone of the film industry, which is the independent television sector. And the submission that we heard loud and clear from Sparta was without a healthy, vibrant television industry, there is no film industry. And I think that's a message that the National Party members have really got to take on board. Because I don't think anyone sat on that select committee and was left with any doubt that this legislation is bad law. It stands in the way of the things that we ought to be encouraging as a nation. And it also stops us from exploring all of those ways that we can um, ensure our identity as a nation as well. Mr Speaker, I think that this bill is a travesty and we will not support it. I call Sue Kedgley.